I believe we're live. Sometimes it takes a second, so we'll give it a second. Hello, everybody. I see some people already here. Hey, guys. Okay, wait. Before we start, while it's loading, my sister subscribes to my channel, and I tell her not to because she's my younger sister. And <laughs> she saw the live show, and she's like, oh, I'm going to wait for it. So she clicks on it, but she clicked on it at, like, 12 o'clock, so there was only, like, one people, like, one person waiting. And she's like, oh, there's only one person waiting. I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> Seven hours before the live show. Dang. I know. Like, or it's, hover it's, four, whatever, on your time. Yeah. Yeah. But it was hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, that was a side story. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our Historical Hellions live show for October. Um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and introduce ourselves. We're reading uh, The Bride, or we read The Bride by Julia Garwood. I love this cover. Um, and then, Teresa, you can start us off, introduce yourself, maybe say what you rated the book. Sure. Uh, well, my name is Teresa, and I'm not really a booktuber, and I'm not. I don't have a booktube, but I do have a book Instagram um, at reads underscore romance. And I have read, I'm like the biggest Julie Garwood fan. I've been reading romance since I was 12. And I started with Johanna Lindsay and then quickly moved to Julie Garwood. So I read The Bride when I was like, I think it was 14 and I love it. I've read it probably 35 times. So very excited to talk about it. I'm completely unbiased, as you can tell. <laughs> That's it. I'm Jessica. You guys know me, co-host. Um, I, I think I still haven't decided what I want to rate it. I finished this at four o'clock. So um, as always, but Samantha finished it later than me, so I beat her. But um, I think I gave this, I'm going to give it four and a half stars. I really oh, like sorry, it. I forgot to say five oh, yeah. million stars. I figured you were. <laughs> 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 so I'm Desiree from Genki Reader on Instagram and Desiree Alicia on YouTube. I read this in 2019, but I remember a good amount of it. And in 2019, I rated it four stars. I feel like if I reread it, I might rate it higher because my taste in books have changed. But at the time, I was feeling four stars. So, Annie, go. Hello, <laughs> Hello I'm Annie. Um, I also don't have a YouTube, uh, but I'm a funny girl named Annie on Instagram. And I have I have a very different opinion of this book. I rated it two stars. Uh, this was a bit of a difficult book for me to get through. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. Um, I'm Samantha, books with Samantha everywhere. Um, <clears throat> I just finished this book literally 30 minutes ago, and I still haven't decided on a rating. I want to say like 3.5, three and a half stars. Uh, more rounding it up to four. I did like it, but it wasn't like my absolute favorite book pick that we've done. But it was so much better than um, last month's book pick. So I liked it, but it just wasn't like my all time like die hard favorite. And also, I will say, I love this live show because, Teresa, you were the first romance Instagram that I found. Oh. Like, the very first one. And then Jessica was, like, the first YouTuber that I found. So I'm, like, my That's favorite. I'm so happy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because you love historical romance. And that's, like, I, like, feel like yeah. that's part of, like, my base. Like, that's where I started. Historical romance is my roots. <laughs> Yes, and you would always have like your Instagram stories where people would do tropes and you would recommend books and I would just be taking like a thousand screenshots. <laughs> I know I haven't done one in a while because they exhaust me. Like it's really hard to like rapid fire those those recommendations. Yeah, yeah. I will say that uh, I would not have Bookstagram or anything be, uh, if it wasn't for Jess because Jess was the first booktuber that I found and I started reading in like a group setting because of the romance book squad when we read Bridgerton together yes. and then mm -hmm. the live was what uh, when I was the guest for um uh romancing Mr. Bridgerton is what kind of kick-started my Instagram so that's awesome I, that that. So happy. I didn't know you didn't have an Instagram before that no I did but it was like my personal Instagram okay. and I just kind of switched over my Instagram to book content <laughs> to me you just always <laughs> been bookstagram Oh, that's cute. Look at romance community being all cute. I love that her husband read the book. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That is very cute. My mom has read it. I asked her. 
She's read Julie Garwood back when she was reading Joanna Lindsay in the 90s. Did she like it? Yeah. She didn't keep any of her books that she owned back then. Which I'm still mad at her <laughs> about. But it's <laughs> I literally um, purged when I moved to DC. I got rid of all of my romance novels, like, right after college. Because I had, like, so I've had to build this back up again. I, I literally had, like, eight books when I started my Instagram. And I was like... Oh, like, when publishers started sending me books, I was like, I don't have any places for these. <laughs> oh, is this my favorite uh, by Julie Garwood? Um, no, it's up there. It was, um, but I'd say The Prize or Honor Splendor are my two favorites by Julie Garwood. Oh, um, better than The Secret? I like The Secret too. Um, I think The Secret has one of the best opening lines in any book ever I've ever read. Like one of the best like opening um paragraphs it's just beautiful so um what was the but, opening paragraph i know uh, read to it <laughs> i'm like where is it i'm pretty sure it's a secret yeah they it became, is a secret yeah they became friends before they were old enough to understand they were supposed to hate each other oh cute yeah. okay cool, cool. Yeah. I, have I, love the, I love the secret because it's all about female friendship and yeah. like it, like but i love like the romance and the prize and uh, the prize is actually kind of similar, I think, to the bride. It reminds me a lot of the bride. So if you liked the bride, you, you'd like the prize too. Uh, this is a series, though, right? Hmm. This is a series, though, right? It is, but they like don't connect that much. Oh. Like they kind oh. of connect. I was gonna ask if her sister gets a book. Does she not? Mm -mm. Oh, that's. I feel like they set it up though. Yeah. If yeah. Her sister and Daniel would get a book. I, wait, I don't think they do. Okay. I'm pretty sure I they know. I didn't read the second one because I was like, if it's not about the sister, why do I care? So yeah, I it's, it's or maybe one. about like her younger sisters, like the twins? No. Mm -mm, no. Oh, yes. It's like, it, I think it's set later. If, if I remember co correctly, it's set later and it's like, I don't remember, like a family friend or something. It's it's not, can I, I, I'm always surprised it's like a series because they stand alone in my mind. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she has so many sisters, and that's like the perfect setup for the beginning of the series. Is like every yeah. sister gets yep. a book. That's what I, mean, I thought it would be. Yeah, no, it's um, it's not. No, mm -mm. I feel like <laughs> Lady Brenna and oh yeah, it's um, yeah, I can't remember how they're connected. I'd have to reread. <laughs> if someone knows, please. Oh yeah, you love Honor Splendor. Um, yeah, so, I don't remember how they're connected. It's very obscure. Like you could read them completely separately. It like it doesn't make any sense to me that they're in a series because most of Julia Garwood's aren't. I think yeah. it was just because the bride was so successful, like um, that they mm -hmm. chose like another book in like the same series. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess some of the characters do make an appearance. For a second, I was like, "Who's Jamie?" And I was like, "That's the heroine." <laughs> They do, they do make an appearance, but they're not, I don't know, it's like not central at all. Yeah. <clears throat> I do not remember who Lady Brenna is. I don't think you need them. <laughs> the next I don't know who that is. I don't think you need them. It's like they're like neighbors or something. Oh my God, this is the <laughs> best comment ever. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, so the beginning of the book feels like a little bit of like a Cinderella if Cinderella had been appreciated. <laughs> like, yes, I, uh, we didn't even make the connection. Yeah, yeah. if yeah. she were appreciated and like they were like, oh my god, Cinderella does all this stuff for us. Thank you. <laughs> Don't leave us ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. So <clears throat> those of you who didn't read the book, she basically is the youngest in her family, but it's kind of like a reverse role where she takes care of all her sisters, she takes care of her father to the point of like. She's kind of not, I want to say being abused, but she's been definitely being taken advantage of. So then yeah. this Laird, the Scottish Laird comes over because the king wants them to be married for like historical romance purposes. And <laughs> she ends up going to, her and her sister end up marrying two Scottish Lairds. And the other sisters just cry a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There yeah. was a, because I was looking through reviews to see why people didn't like it. And there was one that was like, oh, she's basically sold off. And I was like, it's a historical romance. Like, that's what they did. They just, like, had marriage of conveniences yeah. for political reasons. That's what they did in history. Yeah. So why is it so far-fetched to yeah. be in a romance novel? I don't know. And it wasn't like, oh, wow. it wasn't like her family was that was, great. Yeah. And also, she was already sold off. Like, you right? know, she was already was bought and paid for by... Yeah, and like 
She knew uh, that was the reality of her life. Like, and I feel like all women did back then. It's just like, it was yeah. very sudden mm -hmm. and her dad, when their dad went to debt, like that, the King was like, Oh good. Now I can force this political alliance. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Women had no value besides their value in marriage, like what they could bring like to a marriage. Yeah. Which makes me want to go back to this comment because this was yeah. probably why I didn't give it a five stars because it was overbearing how many times the our heroine was told that she was less than or she was not important or like i was like okay we get it she's a woman like yeah. we understand the social status but it was a little overbearing i yeah. think so that was that's that is the chief reason why i i i could not get with this book like i tried really hard but like I like there was so much of Alex internal monologue that was about I need to control her I need she needs to like not be as rebellious whatever whatever and I was just like this is a part of who she is like you just have to like part of being in love is like accepting that person for who they are and I didn't feel like there was enough of a journey enough of a change for him to like to justify that happily ever after like it still felt like even at the end of the book he's still like you are mine and you still have to do what I tell you to do and and all of that and so this book just kind of rubbed me the wrong way because it took away so much of Jamie's uh agency and so much of uh her autonomy and it was never given back to her in any meaningful way and there was just it it I don't know I didn't particularly like it like yes she was well liked by the um by the 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 clansmen and and that kind of thing and so she did have some autonomy in like her healing and all of that but it still felt like there wasn't enough growth within the love story to justify the ending yeah I agree. And I feel like every time that they would like try and compliment her, like, oh, you saved the son or you saved that warrior who almost died. But then they're like, yeah, but you get lost all the time. Or yeah, you're just a woman. Or yeah, your siblings cry a lot. Like, I feel like with every compliment, it was like putting her back in her place almost. So that was the only thing that bothered me just like a little bit. But then as the book progressed, I realized it wasn't so much, I didn't feel so much like she was losing her agency, but that was his way of maybe teasing her. Like it was a banter, but it just felt a little much sometimes. I don't know. I remember reading it and I just thought that she was fighting for her life like every single day in that castle. There was so much going on. <laughs> well, I was like, dang man, she can't catch a break. Cause she was what, was she English? Or was she yeah. the Scotch yeah. one? She's a yeah. Yeah. Kept like, yeah. you know, getting on her about that every single day. And I was just like, wow, she really can't catch a break. So that part for me was the, one of the reasons why it didn't get a full five stars. And also when they first met, I remember he tricked her um, with the whole like part with the kilt or something like that. Like she oh, had, like oh, fell oh, into oh. the... Um, the water yeah. or whatever or no his his bet was i i wager that you're gonna come with me under my plaid by the end of the night and then you're gonna have to have uh you know relations with me and i was just like what what type of wager is that but yeah you know. <laughs> yeah it was, so I, was really, weird. I think the strength it's, of any garwood book is first it's comedy like i think that they're hilarious like i just think what? it's so funny so like even and i also think that her strength is letting the reader know that both characters are oblivious like they're oblivious to their feelings they're telling themselves one thing and we as a reader know another thing so like every time <laughs> that um alec would be like yeah um jamie's the worst she's a woman or she can't do this or she can't do that like i know like that's what he was telling himself because he was falling in love with her and so he was trying to like i don't know like mitigate his feelings that's just how i read it that's how i always view it i also with books written in the 1980s i just kind of put on my old school romance glasses like mm -hmm. i mean sarah mclean's written great articles there's a lot of great articles about there about why old school romance had to be written the way it was written and i completely understand why a modern reader wouldn't like it but um just embracing women's sexuality was really hard when um romance novels were first coming out so this is it I don't know. <laughs> I always look at it from that lens, which is why when it's old school, I'm just like much more forgiving about like misogyny and alpha heroes, etc. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and I don't want to be totally unfair to this book because I mean it is leaps and bounds better than some other books that we've read that I had have had major What's issues always? with consent. Judith McNaught. Oh <laughs> Just you know, throwing it out there. Poor Judith McNaught can crash in every video. I feel horrible. <laughs> There's one good book, one, and then that but is that's what I would compare this to because I don't know what that was okay the um like the first like intimate scene between them could have gone a different way but she wrote it to like make sure like she liked that mm -hmm. alphaness about him and she liked being ravished i guess and like she would say no but then mean yes and i don't know like it, is that like dubious consent i don't know like the term for I that but, dubious like, consent at all because she initiated a lot of it i think that was yeah. what made the clear distinction is if you read like there was a lot of steamy scenes which i was kind of surprised about but when you read each scene almost every single one she initiated she's the right. one who like I wanted to, to be no, with him but then like yeah, yeah yeah and i think you said no because she was she was more naive like she didn't know what to expect maybe she was scared of getting hurt i don't think it was because she genuinely didn't want to be right. with him right but I think the author did a really good job making it clear, like, she wants this and she's so mm -hmm. into it. Yeah. And yeah. that's, I think, where Judith Smith not failed <laughs> with those yeah. scenes in her book. So that's what I appreciate about this. Have you guys, you guys have read yeah. uh, What I Wish, right? <laughs> the, uh, the what? Uh, you guys have read Flowers in the Storm and all of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not I like have that. not. Um... <laughs> I have not because I know that I won't like it. Like, you, uh, right. you know. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I so it's 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 funny that you guys talk about like oh well you know more modern readers wouldn't like it and I'm like that's me I am the right. modern reader who does not like <laughs> this fine. um and so like like for me the first scene especially felt incredibly like like there seemed to be a lack of consent because she didn't quite understand what was going to happen. And like the wager of like, he like basically left her freezing and she like came to him for the plaid because she was going to freeze otherwise. And I'm just like, you know, like, I don't know. I, I feel like it could have been written in such a way where maybe there was like an initial initiation and then it like got heated past that, but it felt very like his his remark about like oh you're in my plaid i was just like ooh ooh that makes me uncomfy that makes me uncomfy and so i actually like reading the first scene i i kind of i was doing this like i was literally like uh i don't like this um and so i that was something that i really struggled with um and like the later scenes are definitely better like there isn't that same kind of dubious consent but I kind of I kind of think about it because there, there, we had this like entire discussion about Bridgerton when that came out and like the like consent of of that and I'm just like there's because women did not know that much about sex you know in, the, in that time it there has to be a certain amount of care taking care of them for the first time that they have sex. And like, she had one conversation with Beck. Beck, was that his name? Beck, um, the father figure. And then, yeah. um, and and then had um, some uh, like, and then there were some like jokes that she kind, kind of went over her head, but kind of made her uncomfortable from uh, Alec. And then everything happened that night. And I'm just like, I don't know. I, I prefer my heroes to take a little bit more care of the heroine, especially for their first time. Like it was, it could have very easily been a traumatic event for her. And like, it wasn't, but it, it like really kind of like skirted that line and that it was a little too close for comfort for me. Yeah. And I mean, I guess what you're saying does make sense because you, she was looking for a lot of reassurance throughout the book, even after they had already slept with one another, like three times, she already was like, Oh, was it good? Did you enjoy yourself? Like she did need a little, like you said, a little bit more care than probably like a contemporary woman who has more knowledge. Um, I have a question and there's absolutely no wrong answer. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Annie, but do you think that old historic romances necessarily get a pass because they're older or do you kind of have the bar like on even keel for whatever book that you're reading? Because I know Teresa mm -hmm. and I had mentioned like, we're kind of not used to it, but we are a little bit more lenient because it's a whole older historical romance. 
Um, for me, I try to be a little bit more lenient because I know that there is that that the uh, background. But I think reading romance is such a personal experience. Like it is, it is so much of the what you bring helps kind of shape the way that you read the book. And like, you know, sexual assault is a touchy subject for me. Uh, and so like seeing that is a very, like it's, it's a very difficult thing for me to read. Even places that are kind of skirting the like, no means yes, type thing but she's like really into it like even that is like is a bit uncomfortable and so in general I I'll read old historicals um but for the most part I only read them if I'm like part of a book club or I'm like I'm reading them for not necessarily like my own choice like if I choose to read a historical like just purely for myself it tends not to be the older historicals because I know that those trigger warnings are so there like or not the tri but the triggers are so there and so I'm just like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is not this is not a comfortable place for me to be in um and I'm also jumping around but the other thing that I really did not like about this book was that the fact that the villain was a mentally disabled woman yeah. like yeah <sighs> when that reveal happened it made me a little uncomfortable I did not yeah. guess that whatsoever. Did you guys? Really? Know? I thought I, I feel well. I've known since I was fourteen, so I was like, "Oh yeah, I know who it is." <laughs> I don't I know why. Like I thought it was one of the guards. I legit thought it was one of the guards. I guess that wouldn't have made sense, but I thought it was one of the guards who just like wanted to be like king or like rule his territory. And when it was the sister, I was like, "The hell!" Like I didn't right. know. Yeah, it for me. And I, it wasn't like developed at all. I was like, "Oh, it's her," and then it just like they just moved on. And I was like, yeah. what just happened? And I didn't like that it was the disabled character that was the villain. Mm -hmm. That did What that happened way. to her? Did they ever say what happened to her? I think she was born that way. No, no, like after. Oh. Like when they found yeah. out what happened, like what did they do with her? We don't know. <laughs> That's why I said they just like, said it was yeah. her and then they moved on. I don't think but, they said. Yeah. There was yeah, a yeah, happily other doctors. So like, what is it? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right. Wait, can you no, refresh my memory? Yeah. This is like the and one also, where I don't remember what with the sister. What was her? Um, so his dead ER? wife. Yeah, his dead wife passed away, and there was a rumor that he killed his wife because he's like this evil Scottish beast, yada yada yada. But then it turned out that everyone actually thought that she was murdered, and there was like in between chapters of like this villainous character like plotting her revenge, and it ended up being his dead wife's sister, he was supposed to be engaged to her, right? They were betrothed, but he ended up marrying the older sister instead. So she kind of had resentment towards it, but she wasn't totally like mentally stable. And it doesn't really say like what disability she has. Okay. Um, they just described her as like very childlike is what they said. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Which yeah, I thought totally that was gonna be a sweet yeah. character that was like gonna be a big part of the plot when she's introduced. Me too. Like, oh, this is great because mm -hmm. like we normally don't have that kind of representation, especially in older historicals. And then it was like, oh no, she's like the murderer. What is happening? Yeah. So, yeah, I did not like yeah. that. Um, yeah, I up until the whole like thing with Edith and her basically like being used as bait to like she like um when uh when Jamie was just like, oh, I'll send you away if you uh displease me or whatever up until that moment i actually thought it was edith i thought that was who was doing the plotting because yeah. like she was it, it, it like i felt like it made sense and so like the whole annie subplot was just like this came out of left field and it it was so weird that you know like i don't know there weren't there weren't any like breadcrumbs there wasn't anything that like kind of even like hinted to that kind of thing. Like would she, in every single interaction with Alec, with Jamie, she was sweet and kind and whatnot. And I was just like, one, it didn't make sense. And two, it also like felt incredibly off-putting that it was the disabled character, the mentally disabled right. character as the villain. Like, I'm like, oh, cause, cause that equates, you know, disability to villainy, which, you know. is a big problem already, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the flip someone said that they like older historicals and newer ones i i like older historicals and the reason i like older historicals and what i like about this book is that they're so like i would liken them to like telenovelas they're so dramatic there's always something going on and i love that drama like just yes. 
I think Sarah McLean describes it as like romance reasons. It just makes sense because it's a romance. We don't necessarily have to have like a whole, like it's just romance reasons. And I'm like, I love that. I love older historicals that are a little bit more lyrical and they're like 600 pages and they're just like, just a fun time. So I will say that the more older ones I read, I do like them a lot. I do like some of the newer ones too, but those are starting for, to me, read more contemporary than they do historical. Yeah. I'm really hard on modern historical romance. Not, I think, because of, like, I like old school romance so much, but I guess I just have really high expectations for historical romance. And if it reads to me like a contemporary romance set in historical ballroom, I'm not going to like it. <laughs> like, there just has to be different mm -hmm. motivations and different tone for me to, like, really get invested in the story. Um, and there have been plenty of mis modern historical romances that do that, but it's, um, I don't know, it takes like a specific voice. And that's why I usually like, when I find one author that works for me, I'm like, oh, good, thank God. I don't have to keep trying new authors. Like I can read this person's whole backlist because mm -hmm. like, um, that's why I think like, like an Elizabeth Hoyt or like a Stacey Reed or like they have like, I don't know, almost like a darker tone and um, or Kiergan mm -hmm. Byrne. And I don't, I think it's just like when they add that level of like seriousness, um, I enjoy it, which is so funny because I really like the irreverent old school romances. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> it has to have a very like, yeah. No, but I get that because when I started reading romance seriously, my first romance actually was a Julie Gar, but it was Prince, um, Prince Charming. Uh, and I was in high school. And at the time, I probably shouldn't have been reading it because I was still reading YA. But anyways, um, for for like a lot of the modern ones, the first one that I read seriously, I think was a Tessa Dare book. And I love Tessa Dare. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to like drag her because I think she has great books. But I do feel like it feels like a modern contemporary type rom-com but they're just in like <laughs> Victorian mm -hmm. or like historical clothes because of how they interact with each other um it just doesn't have that same charm or ambiance that an older one may have um I've noticed and like I said I don't have a like particular problem with uh Tessa Dare but sometimes it just does feel kind of weird um how modern <laughs> some of them feel I, I agree. I think it's interesting um, because we talk about like feminism, which I'm told feminist, obviously, but I think that it's really fun and interesting when heroines are feminists and able to be feminists within the modern, within the historical constraints of their book. So mm -hmm. like Jamie did the best she could in her situation. And I found her to be a very interesting and charming character because of it. So like, um, Alec would tell her to do one thing and she would just she would just kind of do whatever she wanted and like realized that like like when she rode the horse she was just like it's it is what it is like I know what I can do and so I think that that's what I'm struggling with with modern historical romances is that it's like it's like there we have these very feminist modern women in historical context which is great but the world around them like accepts that and I'm like okay but can they fight against the world a little bit? Can the world not just like accept that like there's like a female inventor that's like it's they're like, oh yeah, that's fine, it's gonna be great, or like, et cetera. That's what why I love it. <laughs> Have you read the Ray Kess by Scarlett Peckham? No, I have it on my shelf. I haven't read it yet. I'm very nervous. That's why I love that one. I love or hate it. It's like there's no in between that book. Say that Jessica. Society shuns her for being like having a, a romantic relationship with a guy out of wedlock. And like he went on to have a super successful political career and she was like bashed by society and like got threatening notes and everything. And so now she's writing like a tell all book about it, but she's still like seriously looked down upon in society. So I love that book for that reason. Then she falls in love with a single dad and it's super adorable. But I agree with you. Like with a lot of, I feel like it's always the traditionally like the trade paperback. Mm -hmm. that also that are like the illustrated covers I have not been liking those mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of them are like here's the female inventor and like it's amazing mm -hmm. and I just like they're very watered down I feel mm -hmm. like to appeal to not and I've said this a lot I've been going on rants on my TikTok about I've been watching all of them they're so We're great trying <laughs> to appeal to the non-romance reader and it's making me so frustrated yes. with the covers with the stories inside so it mm -hmm. I think it is nice reading these older ones because then you get skirting the line and like I love dark Annie I know you hate dark romance and so that's why you probably don't like them I love dark romances so this is like 
comparing to that, like I think someone already said that in a comment too, yeah. that it's like reading dark romances. And yes. that's what we like in them. And there's I don't feel like there's a right answer to either of it, whether no. you like older historicals or newer historicals. Right. But and it makes so much sense. You read a lot of contemporaries because I feel like newer historicals are very have a contemporary feel to them and why so many people are reading historicals now, which is wonderful because it gives more um diversity in the genre. But I just, I just like older historicals. Like, I don't feel like we get a lot of Julie Garwood humor, like ter uh, Teresa was saying, like the humor and the, like all the almost lyricalness of it. And because the newer historicals are shorter and I feel like the steamier scenes are less a little bit. I don't know. That's just what I've been noticing recently, not with all yeah. books, but just like recently. Yeah. I mean, I was talking about this with in my book chat earlier today, where like the new Ju uh, Julie Quinn books are so watered down. Like, like I like some of them like have no steam whatsoever. Like the the Rokesby uh, ones, I was just like reading them. I was just like, where's the sex? Where like and the thing is that, like I'm really frustrated by this because like I actually really enjoyed Bridgerton. Like it was it's a it's a it's a very like nice uh easy like historical to kind of get into where you have like the right amount of steam the the world building is not so much that you're like lost and that kind of thing so i i recommend it to people especially since bridgerton of the show i recommend it to people who are like oh i kind of want to start historical this is a great place to start um but like her new stuff i was just like what is this like i i don't know i think part of the, of it is also that my general vibe is i like a very sweet cinnamon rolly type hero like that in, oh, in all God, types God. of media oh, and God. a lot of historical like older historicals don't uh, feature that because yeah. because so much of like women's sexuality was not uh looked as something that is like easy to explore they kind of have to put situations where the woman like not can't say no but like is That's like true. kind of pressured to give in in order to be able to like experience that sexual uh ex to have that sexual experience and like that's actually like a quite common um like fantasy of like the rape trope like there are some people who, like some women who like grew up in like a very conservative space and have fantasies about getting raped because it means that they don't have they they do not have to say yes they do not have to say yes to the sinful thing and so in order for those types of heroes to exist in the books, they kind of, by general, have to be like alpha domineering, very masculine, traditionally masculine. And because that's just like not my type of hero, I find that a lot of them are just like not not my thing. The, the, one of the few exceptions, actually, I read with you guys, uh, is this guy. I love this book so much. Oh, I but love I think that book. Love it's it. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think it's because Alex has a lot of sweetness in him and yeah. she, Lily is just a much more independent person. And so she, she already has that autonomy kind of given in. Um, and so I think that's part of the reason why like this one, this one worked for me in a way that this one did not. If you want like a beta hero, older school romance, say you love me by Johanna Lindsay. It's the fifth book in her Mallory uh, series as a pretty like beta hero um i love that book so biased again but um the heroine is sold at auction um by her like family because they're in debt like her uncle sells her at an auction which yeah and the hero like steps in and buys her and saves her and it's very like i don't know he, and then he's like oh so you're my mistress and she's like yeah, I guess. And he's like, I don't really know what to do with you. <laughs> and like puts her in a house. And it's yeah. very um and the, the villain is like crazy in that book. Like like major terror warnings. Like he's like yeah. very terrible. <laughs> Who wrote what that one again? That? Yeah. What brother is that? Whose book is that? Um it's Derek Mallory, who is the oldest, like of the Mallory brothers' son. Yeah. It's his oldest son. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, I read... that's Hmm. I read um, a series, but I've only read book one, two, and three. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I read, um, oh God, what is it? was a Sophie Jordan book. Um, what had a similar pre premise, the and Dick I really, really like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I buddy read that with Jackie. Have mm -hmm. you read um, Ravished by Amanda Quicko? Because I feel like that hero is very, that whole romance is so wholesome and adorable. And I just, I can't get over how good that was. I loved it so I much. I haven't read that one. I read Dangerous and like, I enjoyed it, but it didn't read full Rome. It felt very much like a, 
Uh, this is a fun mystery romp and there wasn't really a lot in terms of like the romance. And so I hadn't uh, continued on with that. Um, I read it for Winter of the Wallflowers with uh, Seasonally Booked Up. Okay. Ravished is so good. It's my favorite. It's so yeah, I, yeah, Ravished it's was so perfect. perfect. Like it's I gave it my- five billion stars. It was so good. <laughs> It's my second favorite romance novel. It's um, it's Dreaming of You by Lisa Claypass, and then it's Ravish by Amanda Quick. Like, two yeah, top so we already mentioned Derek. Derek is, Derek is an alpha, though. I wouldn't call him a cinnamon roll. I oh, would no. no, call him no, he's not. No, those are just my top two <laughs> romances of all time. I actually haven't read the Derek Craven book. I haven't I have either. It. Yes. I don't think it's right here. I don't know. Take that back. <laughs> You have the pretty cover. It's so pretty. I, I think I have a cover. cover too. I uh, if you don't yeah, like uh, it, just don't tell me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really okay with people not liking books I recommend, except for that one. Like what, <laughs> the one, like I was like, oh, I read that book because you um you told me to read it. I gave it like two stars. I was like, damn it. <laughs> I was like, don't Teresa, talk to I love that. I I really don't care when people don't like my my favorite book it has happened a few times but there's the one book that i am that like that with is again the magic if you put again the magic and you don't like it don't tell me i don't, don't care <laughs> your opinion is not relevant to me it's just gonna make me sad <laughs> i'm like that with like one book with like um, oh yes booktubers are like i don't like this one book which is um the with not the bride test but the first helen huang book Oh, like yeah. Yeah, and they're like, I don't like that. I'm like, I don't think I can watch you anymore. I'm sorry. That's yeah, people say it's problematic. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. but where? Oh. I don't know. So, so <laughs> this this was the so uh for those of you who don't know, I am on the autistic spectrum. And this was the first book that I read that had like proper representation that like felt really real. Again, which is why when when the villain was named Annie and had like an wow. intellectual disability, I was just like this really, this really, like previous to that, I was just like, maybe I'll give this a three star. And I was like, no, this is a two star book for me. <laughs> I <laughs> love all of this again, the magic love. Mm. Y'all are my people. Okay. <laughs> I like how people don't even write dreamy of you. It's just Derek Craven. So we know, we know he has his own day. day right. Like, has yeah. said that she won't write him in any more books because he takes over the whole book. <laughs> like he, she can't put him in any other book. Dang. Because people are obsessed. Everyone who reads Cleopas always talks about Derek Craven. Hmm. Which, you know what? Fine. That's fine. I, I <laughs> like him a lot. It's fine, but. <laughs> but. <laughs> McKenna. <laughs> uh, this is a little better. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but I also really like Cameron, too. Cameron's one of my other favorite heroes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's great. He's great. Is that mine? I, I think. Yeah, mine to my name. Oh, okay. I like that one. Yeah. I think Alex is actually one of my favorite heroes and he doesn't get talked about because he's in the same series as Derek Craven. And right. so you kind of forget about him. And I'm like, but he like, I don't know. I like, as I mentioned, I like kind of a sweeter hero and he read very sweet. Like you first meet him and he's very like domineering, but like, as you kind of pull back the layers, you like see how like deeply he cares and how sweet he was. And I was just like, uh, yes, this is what I want. So we were going to read Derek Craven for the book club. We were going to read his book, but then we realized that it's the second book in the series. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know about the first book because nobody even talked about, about, about it. it. And I was like, but it's so freaking good. Yeah. It is so good. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is good. It's just, well, I mean, then Dreamy of You came along and everyone's like, what? <laughs> like, no. really awesome if you, like, yeah, she gave, you guys, she gave the mouse a dress. Guys, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys decide to to read it, uh, please let me know because I will definitely be here for that because I, I'm i a little bit scared to read it because a lot of people who know my like reading tastes say that like you might not like it. It might not be like your thing because of the type of hero that Derek Craven is. Um, and so okay. I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, straight up to you, Manny. <laughs> Oh god, that's so funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, I want to know, Andy, you have to read it now. Are these people right? I feel but like I would love it though. I feel like it's feel like you'd like a historical romance history that you need to read it yeah. now and let us know what you think. We'll read it together. For me, if you don't like it, just don't tell me. It's fine. I accept your opinion. I respect you. Don't tell me. 
Okay, so like, answer me this about Derek, because I've only like heard things about it, but I don't really read what people say about him because I don't want to be spoiled. So Derek Craven, is he like, is he a stoic cinnamon roll where he's like, no. on the outside, he's hard, but like once you get down deep, deep down, he's like no. kind of nice at all? <laughs> Not at all? Not really. <laughs> Not at all? Okay. Like he has like a glimmer of like light in his heart and it's mm -hmm. for Sarah. That's like, yeah, he carried her glasses. Like, 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 like so yeah. he only likes one person. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like he's it. He's really good to his like employees. Like, so, okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> his like favorite because like, I hate everyone but you. So. Yeah. No, he doesn't hate everyone. Like he likes his staff and stuff. Like he, he's like, a he's best friends person. with the heroine in book one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, he's, he is. Person. he's he just is. um with like women. He's never been like particularly like even what he, the best thing he ever did for Lily was tell her that he can't be with her. He was mm -hmm. like he like pushed her away. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, uh, he runs a gambling I hell, and I feel say, like that's just a persona. Like you know what I mean? Like I don't think he's overbearingly alpha. No, but I wouldn't say he's a cinnamon roll at all. Like, no, he's pretty mm -hmm. hard. Alpha yeah. mellow is that what people say? He's a he's both. He's a mixture of both. Sure. Um, I will say that there are there are a lot of things that I normally don't like in historical romance, but like uh <laughs> um, but like I I really love Lisa Kleypas's writing style so much that there are things that, that normally if they were in other books or other historicals, it would just wouldn't work for me. But because of the way that she writes, I'm like okay, I could see this and like, I could get into it. Um, and so it's possible that like, he might be the exception to the rule. I don't know. I also the thirsty wallflowers keep talking about like, oh, we need to find like an alpha hero that Annie will love. Uh, so so they, they've coined it called Alpha Annie uh, or Alpha for Annie. That's cute. I love that. <laughs> so everyone just send Annie an influx of DMs of all your favorite alpha romances. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. But now I'm curious. We we completely derailed from this book, but I'm curious. Sorry. So Lisa, Lisa Clippis, Derek Craven, that is your book that you do not care if anyone likes. Yeah. It's your holy grail. Jessica, do you have a book like that? Oh. Um I feel like it's that um uh oh the the word the madness of Lord Ian McKenzie. I was just thinking, is it the madness of Lord Ian McKenzie? Because oh, he's my favorite. And I just love that book so much. I would say oh, it's that book. Yeah. But okay. I don't know anybody who's read it and hated it. So I've never had that problem. Okay, subtle flex. <laughs> just has great taste in books. She doesn't have to worry about that. This is uh, my copy of Dreamy View. And the middle pages are falling. Like, they've fallen out. Like oh, That's how many no. times I've read it. And Lisa Cleave has signed it for me. I can't. <gasps> oh, oh, that's so special. I love it. You know, yeah. people are like, you need the original cover. I'm like, yeah, but this one, I mean, this is why it's David a fire, guys. Yeah. Um, if I, if I find, cause uh, so my, like these, I found at my uh, used bookstore in my hometown. If I find a copy of this, I'll send it to you. Please do. I have one like that, but it doesn't have a step back. So. Yeah. I keep treasure yeah. hunting, but you know, Jess always gets the to have this book before me, and then I'm like, oh, I was gonna go this week, but now <laughs> I, I can't. never go to the one by you. That's the one furthest from me, so I don't go there as often. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Jess and I live 20 minutes from each other. That's why yeah. we are talking like this. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Desiree, do you have a book like that? What that you don't care if anyone likes? You're just like it's like die hard. Um, other than the quiz quotient, because that's just like if you don't like it, then we can't be friends for me. But um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. <clears throat> I thought you were gonna say marriage for one because you always talk about that. That's book. probably the one. Say, I thought you were gonna because... say more Robert book, yeah. Well, marriage for one is like he he's the absolute perfect hero for me. I didn't dislike anything about him in that book. That's like my like epitome of what I want in all of my heroes because he was so cold to her in the beginning and then you think that he's like a complete asshole and then you get towards like the middle and you're like wow he's like a really great person and he's so sweet to her and he wants to do everything for her and I also like the setup with like the coffee shop and he's a lawyer and I just oh, I love that whole book <laughs> so yeah don't <laughs> don't tell me anything bad about my intro one <laughs> I don't care how many times people have recommended it recommend it more it's really good <laughs> annie do you have a book like that i have two 
Um, so oh, red, white, and royal blue. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, I love red, white, and royal blue. Um, but uh, I I really love Tessa Dare. Like I I know she's like very rom commy in a historical setting, but like that's very much my vibe. And like this one, just like it was so funny, it was so sweet, it was so cute. Um, it just like it really it really spoke to me. But like pretty much anytime that someone doesn't, says they don't like Tessa Dare, I'm just like, oh, but my soul, but my soul. <laughs> She's so good. Um, and then uh, this this one might be a little a little too too early. Uh, but the love hypothesis, like it just came out, but I've yeah. already read it twice. And like when the and like I liked her writing style so much that I went and like looked up her fan fiction so I could read her fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so good. What, what, I mean, if you read fan fiction, I would, and you like the love hypothesis, I would recommend it. Uh, if you don't read fan fiction, um, there might be some tropes that you're like, that's weird. Never seen that before. Um, and uh, when I went and uh, read chapter 16, I then started rereading parts of it. And I was just like, I can't read it for a third time in a month. That's too many times. It's too many times. No, it's not. That, that book is really incredible. <laughs> I really like that one. I reread a manga eight times in the same month. I mean, it's a manga, so it's a little bit shorter, but read whatever you want, however many times you want, as long as it makes you happy. Yeah, I'm a um, huge fan of reading books. I read Again the Magic. I'll just pick up the book and read like a scene every once in a while. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, I love I reading. With, I do that with this book a lot too. I have mm -hmm. the other two oh, okay. books are with my best friend because they're, um, I went to an event and the event was at a bookstore that was near her. And we were supposed to see each other like two months ago, uh, but COVID happened some more. And so we couldn't see each other, but I'm seeing her in like two weeks. I'm really excited because I haven't seen her in like, two years um but yeah uh, <clears throat> what is her fanfic uh, about also, uh there's a bunch of different ones they're all Raylo so uh Kylo Ren and um uh and uh Ray from Star Wars and um I prefer the ones that are like modern AUs because uh he's not killed his father in that story like I I personally did not enjoy Raylo as like a concept in the movies like I was just like hmm he seems like kind of an asshole not my thing um but her characterization of him I like really really speaks to me um and there's a really really long one that I really liked called uh I think it's called the matters of your heart or something like that and it it's a like alpha and omega fan fiction so if you know anything about that world it ha it lives under those rules uh, I love. And I just discovered the Omega verse, and it's changing my life. It is changing my life. It's yeah. the best thing ever. Um, so if you if you liked the Love Hypothesis and you like Alpha and Omega, like would recommend, and you can download it as a movie file and just send it to your Kindle, which is what I did, and that was a great way to spend an afternoon. Let me tell you, that is genius. <laughs> Oh my goodness. No, but seriously, I didn't even know the Omega verse existed. Desiree knew about it this whole time. And it's 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 quite glorious. It is amazing. I read way too much of it. It's yep. kind of a problem. I never read fanfic. I used to write fan fiction. I never read it. I did. I feel like I read it when I was younger, but I don't. Anymore. Yeah, I've never read fanfic. The only fan fiction, oh gosh, the only fan fiction I read was like in high school and it was a One Direction fan fiction that my friend used to write. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I read, I read the Love Hypothesis without like, like I knew it was fan fiction, like kind of, but like I didn't, I don't watch Star Wars either. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah. sure. See, he looks like Adam Driver in my mind. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> one good Earl. I haven't read that Sarah McLean book. Have you guys read that one? No. Yeah, it's good. It's really I, cute. I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I still need to read Sarah. I'm so so sorry. What? Have you read any Sarah I, McLean? What? Ten rules to break when romancing a rake man. Just like oh, I know. I think I have that on my Kindle. One day. You mean nine? Yeah, because I feel like, nine. It's like that's still like my favorite book by her and that's her debut and i'm like I, yeah oh god i so like good. other ones it's more so but i like that one best i love that entire series but my favorite in the series is the third one. Oh, really mm -hmm. i yeah. love that heroine she's fantastic yeah i like that I one i agree mm -hmm. i like mm -hmm. that whole i like that whole first series of hers mm -hmm. i mean i hate the new cover but it, it's fine it's fine 
Oh God. The prom dress. God. <laughs> I started on it. it Don't get started. It, I mean, I can't, it, everything about it is awful. There's no redeeming qualities. Yeah. Wait, what's yeah. the um, yeah. No, it's the recover of nine rules. Nine rules. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, where where she's wearing basically a, ta a dress that Taylor Swift wore. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fine. We're going the contemporary route. That's totally fine. But then the fact, like, that she, the heroine wasn't even curvy like she's supposed to be in the book. Yeah. I was just like, Ew. so much opportunity wasted. That's so sad. Yeah. I love, I love that book, but I'm just so unhappy with the cover. Tell me a marketing team hasn't read the book without telling me a marketing team has not read the book. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, also, we like talking about selection. It. Sorry, it what you um, we we were just talking about it before we came on here. This cover. Yeah. <laughs> She wore black oh. to their wedding. It was she iconic, her wearing black on purpose. And she, she doesn't wear even it. wear white to her wedding, so I don't know <laughs> what the cover is about. But it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I forgive yeah. this cover, though. I don't forgive that Sarah McLean cover. They That's should do better. Yeah, you're That's right. Sarah McLean's not. But we didn't mention, going back to the book, um, his knees <laughs> and oh how God. upset oh, right. he was. Their kilts were short. Oh my god, really she short, like mid thigh. And I was like, these men are walking around with mid thigh kilts on. Like Alexander, <laughs> they're like at their knees, but yeah, yeah. That that reminded me. I don't, I don't know if you that uh, I don't know if you guys have watched Maid of Honor. It was like a mid two thousands yes. comedy, and he comes out wearing that super short kilt. And when yeah. she was talking about his knees and his upper thighs, I was just like, "That is that was the image that I was thinking." And like that was just not an attractive look on Patrick Dempsey. Like you know, like Patrick Dempsey at the time was like a very attractive man, but just the short kilt was like it was a lot. And then there was like one point where he was like swing something and you could like see up his kilts and they had mentioned that they weren't wearing underwear underneath there and I was just like it gets cold there what are you doing <laughs> have you guys ever read the truth about cats and dukes by Elise Braden no no it's one of my favorites Elise writes great books she's an indie historical romance author and in that book uh the heroines uh the hero's obsessed with the heroine's hands oh and wait I've read that one that's a good yeah, one it's so funny like i just love it when they fixate on like one odd thing about yeah. like i think tessa bailey made a like a uh, tiktok about something like that recently it's just like when they yeah. fixate on that one thing it's i think that's so funny it's like Be uh, beverly jenkins um and the mustache in night song oh yeah mm -hmm. how yeah. many times yeah. that mustache was love it, <laughs> I love to see it. And he was oh, so enthralled by her hands and how small and like dainty they were and she was a plus size heroine with yeah. uh, glasses She's and so like his uh his friend was like talking about her and he's like you're not looking at your hands are are their hands are you like don't look at her hands <laughs> his friend's like what are you talking about oh, 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 romance is girl. great so many romance genre guys um <clears throat> uh, okay so let's go around uh what are you guys reading now Teresa what are you reading right now I've been in a big reading slump so I have just been rereading Nalini Singh's Psy Changeling series and just living my best life, rereading it for the millionth time. It's been nice. It's been an escape reading. Um, that's it. <clears throat> love that. I've only read to the second book, but I, I plan on continuing because I, I freaking loved the first book. Like, oh, she's, a, she's a genius. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica? I'm reading Before the Dawn by Beverly Jenkins, um, oh, and yes. it's really good, and I didn't know the premise, so she gets married to her mom's boyfriend, because her mom died, and the, the boyfriend man's about to die, and so she marries him to, like, get his stuff, but she has to go and visit his son, who he pretty much, like, hasn't seen in 30 years, and she has to have a marriage of convenience with her stepson, so... It's really funny. The I just wanted to show this cover. Gorgeous. Because it's braids. I love it. Oh, yeah. The braids. I love that cover. Braids. Yes. Everything. Oh, Beverly Jenkins. I swear to God. Her covers are the best. Yeah. She's and the really hero's really actually really half Native American, half black. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I need to read that one. It's really good. Desiree, what are you reading right now? I'm reading 
my well not the first ever arc i've read but probably the first one in a while it's proper scoundrels by ali theron which is the spinoff of the magic in manhattan series and i love this one so much because it's about lord fine who is kind of like this very stiff and cold and very mean character in the first series the original series and he gets a love story with uh, the villain from the first series. And it is so good because the villain turns out to be like an absolute puppy because he was being controlled by someone else. So he was like a villain sort of, but like it wasn't all of his own free will. I love it. It's so cute. It's adorable. <laughs> I can't wait to give it five stars when I finish. <laughs> <clears throat> Annie, what are you reading? So I'm in the middle of reading Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey. However, it doesn't have an audiobook, and so it's like taking me forever because books that don't have audiobooks, like I can't, I can't pick it up in like the times when I'm doing other things. And um, I'm working on so this. This is gonna sound so weird. So Taylor Swift released merch yesterday, yesterday, two days ago, of um, for her Red re-release, and she, one of the things was the All Too Well scarf. And so I'm making the all too well scarf and I'm like documenting my journey on TikTok. Um, and, and so I'm like filming time-lapse videos. So like, the, like an hour is basically condensed into a minute. Um, and I need the audiobooks to do that. Like I can't read and knit at the same time. And so I might pick up, it might be, I don't know what I'm going to uh, pick up. I don't know what I'm feeling, but right now I'm in the middle of reborn yesterday, but I'll probably pick up something else as well. Damn. Someone is reading Credence. That is a wild, wild book. I still haven't read it. I'm scared of that book. I'm like Me real too. scared of it. Uh, I, I teeter back and forth. There's days that I'm like, I hated that book. And other times that I'm like, oh, that book was great. Like, I don't know. <laughs> that book was wild. The first, was oh, the first Penelope Douglas book I read was Punk 57. I was like, what is this? That was the first <laughs> Penelope Douglas book I read was Credence. Me too. And I was like, this is some wild shit. Like, I was like, these high schoolers are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was it Punk 57? Yeah, Punk 57 was the first one that I read, and then I read Birthday Girl. I read Punk 57 Girl, and I didn't read the book for two weeks because I was like, ugh, my, I'm so angsty. I can't yeah, know. Birthday Girl was fabulous. Credence was just wild. I think it was just like, shock factor because i didn't really know much about right. it going into it and then she was just like banging everyone and they were kind of related not really and it was just weird it was a weird weird time penelope douglas had me out here really thinking that i liked angst and i don't i don't <laughs> either <laughs> Same. yeah oh annie you must hate really like that book have you read credence no i've read punk 57 and it was not for me uh and so i have not dipped myself back into the uh into the Penelope Douglas pool, um, especially because everyone recommends Birthday Girl. And I don't know, that that age difference just like kind of, there's something about that power imbalance that I'm not here for. Oh, I love a good age gap. My dream. I'm obsessed. Yeah, age gaps <laughs> yeah, are like my thing. Them. But I like, I like them better recently when the younger person is like 26 or 24. I think I mean, that's like the, the ripe age for them to be with like someone who's 45, but. <laughs> <laughs> or older heroine and older heroine is always nice to read too. Yeah. I don't think I've read too many with an older heroine, to be honest. I like yeah. it better when the hero is I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. <laughs> Have you read Pool Boy? No. <gasps> I hadn't either, not yet. I think I, I downloaded it when okay, I was so don't boom it. it. That's so that book is so good. I'm not I can't, well, my heart hurt. I, I can't deal. I <laughs> uh wait do i have yeah i have it i actually have quite a few of her books that i just haven't read fair who is sierra Sma? who what, what what author did you uh, say nikki sloan oh why did i say sierra Sma? oh because that's one of the that's one of the comments someone's reading a sierra Sma. that's why i said that oh <laughs> i was like what? i was like why did my brain come up with that name <laughs> It's the want to say what we're <clears throat> oh yeah, 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 our next book. We are reading Pirate's Pleasure, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. By Heather Grant. That's pretty. 
It is very pretty. You have the, the prettier one. I don't have the embossed text. It is embossed. I got it for $1 at my bookstore. Whoa. I know. Uh, so it's a pirate book, and that's all we know. Or that's all I know. And hopefully we like it because the last pirate book was trash. So hopefully this one will not be. I think he has an eye patch. Does he? <laughs> he does in the picture. Yeah. He better in the book then. I love an eye patch. Oh, love it. Yeah. Great. He's a oh, he's from the Caribbean, and he um, hijacks her ship. That's all it says. So she's right. the pirate. No, no, he's the pirate. Yeah, he hijacks, he hijacks she's her. She's traveling. Ship. She's like betrothed to another. Oh. And it's not too long. It's less than four hundred pages. So this is our next one. <clears throat> I don't remember. It's not short, which was very nice. Yeah, <laughs> we have guest hosts for this, Jessica. Not yet. We haven't decided yet. Wait, can so I join? Because I wanted to read Heather Graham, actually. She's, like, on my list. We officially have a guest host. It's Desiree, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, if anyone wants to guest host, just let us know. Thanks, guys. I want to be on there for the Julia Quinn one. The Minx. We're reading we're that. The Minx, right? Uh, we're reading that in January. Oh, yes, yes. I forgot about that. Which one are you reading yes. in January? Splendid. Minx? Oh, Splendid. Splendid. I like Splendid. One. I like uh, Dancing in Moonlight better, but I like Splendid too. It's a good one. Yeah. I just got a copy I... of that. I know. I saw it I on have, your I, have... story. I was so jealous. I had a whole box of books for $20. I was like, it's going to be a dollar? Yes, I'm getting this box. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't, I can't control myself. I don't go on eBay. I like, just don't yeah. do it. I'm like, I, and I don't really yeah. get how eBay works, so that helps. Yeah. I have an extra copy of How to Marry the Marquess with the Step Back. If anyone is looking for that, you can DM me. I accidentally I bought two. It's a pretty one. I like that book too. Yeah. Yeah. So the books on eBay are like, 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 like ridiculously expensive these days. Well, yeah. yeah. Gosh darn it. I forget works. about the hardbacks. I was collecting the hardbacks before the show came out and I should have finished and I never did. And I still don't have like. And now you never will. <laughs> I've never done that. Like 10 years. <laughs> I yeah. still am I looking have, for, back for Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. I still haven't found that. I but don't you have the paperback? I don't even have the paperback. I have the ugly, ugly paperback. The, bl um, the black and blue one. Black and blue one. Oh, yeah. 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 It's her. So I decided for our December book because I think that's a time travel romance. Right? The a Moment the in Time by Beatrice Small. I have no idea. I think it's Beatrice a time travel. Does write some time travel, so that's a good, that's a good thought. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us so much. We love having you. One of my favorite live shows. Everybody's links will be down below if you want to follow them. You probably are already following them, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.